Hey, shalom. Most I request bless. I'm Captain Gideon. And to my right, Officer Bezalou. You are watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. And today's topic is you're not safe with your money. Whether you're a big star, you're a Nick Cannon, you're a Stoudemire, you're a Kodak Black, whoever it is that, you know, you're in the industry making your money, that's not going to save you. So the focus should be come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. We're going to get right into it. Let's go to the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 13. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So what was going on? A, 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 a mandate was uh, um, put out to kill all the Jews. And Mordecai asked Esther to do something dealing with presenting herself before the king, and she refused. So Mordecai had to remind her, don't think you're going to escape because you're in the king's house. So it's the same for you uh, superstars, for you uh, who, who's, who got all the wealth of, of this world, as far as our people are concerned. You're not safe. You're not safe just because you're sitting on 60 mil. You're not safe just because you're sitting on 100 mil. You can never rise higher than the, than the status of the lowest of your people. And that's what Mordecai had to remind Esther, and today this is what we're reminding you. You're not safe. Just because you got money, they hate you, they hate me who's broke. But the only difference is, if I keep doing things right, guess what? I'll have eternal crown. But if you keep doing things the way you're doing it, you'll have eternal damnation. And this is our job, to put those things in remembrance, so that way you can come back to the Lord's statutes and commandments. Right? Read on. Verse 14, for if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth, knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So he, uh, Mordecai reminded Esther, if you hold your peace, guess what? Deliverance is still going to come. The Israelites are going to be saved. But you who held your peace, you who felt comfortable sitting on your millions of dollars and never did, never lift a finger to help the truth, destruction is going to come your way. But as for us, we will be delivered because why? The Most High God always make a way for his people. And like you told Esther, maybe Most High put you in that position to do what? For a day such as this. Today, you, we all grew up in Christianity. We all grew up in different you know, um, denominations or whatnot, different walks of life. And some of us made it big. Maybe the most I allow you to make it big so that way today, as you see all the atrocity that's going on in the world, you've tried everything, voting, marching, nothing ain't working. But now you see a, 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 a how you say, a, a beacon of light that's shining, which are what? The Israelites. We're standing out there teaching in the streets every Saturday. Uh, every day, actually. We have the 365-day camp to bring our people back to Christ. So what should you do? Help us. That's your job. But if you want to sit on your bread thinking you safe with your money, judgment's coming for you. But deliverance will come for Israel because Israel will be saved regardless. All right? Um, give me uh, Psalm 49 verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 49, verse 7. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. You see that, people? All the money in the world, you could not redeem. You could not buy back the soul of your brother, let alone yours. So why are you hoarding all that money for? What is, what is it to you? Okay, you're sitting on 100 mil. Okay, you're sitting on a billion. You have enough money to live 10 life, uh, 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 10, um, 10 times. But are you going to live 10 different times? No. Once you're gone, you're gone. You understand? But salvation will come for the Israelites. Your money remains right here. The, the, the great pharaohs thought they could live with their money. What happened? They're buried in a tomb. And centuries later, what happened to those tombs? They get raided. They get raided. And what do you find in there? A skeleton and a lot of gold. And many people got rich off of what? The ignorance of those pharaohs. 
You know how much atrocity those pharaohs put us through to get that wealth? It's the same today. We're going through the same atrocities and for these nations to get rich. And as they get wealth, they give you little tokens because you can shoot a ball. They give you little tokens because you can sing. And they make you feel special and welcome you in their circles and you actually think you belong. So you better think twice because destruction is coming for all you who are at ease. Put your money to good use like um, Joseph of Arimathea. You understand? Put your money to good use. Give me um, at, um, give me on First Timothy six and seven. The book of First Timothy chapter six and seven. So with all that money you're gathering, you can't save nobody. You cannot save your soul with that. So is it wrong to have money? By all means, no. Make sure you do good with it. Read the book of First Timothy chapter six verse seven. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain. We can carry nothing out. That's not what the pharaohs thought. They thought they could take all our money with them. To the afterlife. You understand? Who said, I heard Crest the Dollar say, I don't want to go to heaven broke. What Bible are you reading? Must be the dollar Bible. All you reading there is dollar. Give me dollar. Give me dollar. I'm not, like, I'm... I'm not going to go to heaven, bro. So you're going to hoard all this money to make it to the heaven. So the Most High is going to set up a kingdom that's going to use Esau's money. That's, that's, that's straight up stupid. It's to show you how much people don't even know their Bibles. But read on. Verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So if we have food and clothing and shelter, be happy. Do you need a house? That have 12 bathrooms, 24 bedrooms, and it's just you, your wife, and two kids? 25 cars? You don't need all that. But you're, you do it because guess what? You are selfish and you only think of yourself. So it's only right when the Mosai return, guess what? To judge you because you never did good to his people. Look at how many rich black men we have. You, you mean to tell me all these super rich black folks could not put together and do something positive for their neighborhood? You got, we got brothers got to go to Africa to build up schools to give water to the people in that land. But right here in the hood that they come from, they ain't do nothing to help that hood. What that shows you, you hate your people. And you're hiding behind your money thinking you're safe. But the day will come where a dollar cannot save you. Read on. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into t to temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which drown men in destruction and perdition. So because you're so thirsty for that money, guess what you keep doing? Abominable things to acquire more. You want to go to Hollywood, now you're grabbing your ankles. That's why I say you drown themselves in hurtful lust. Many a time you see start hanging themselves. Why? Because of all the nonsense they did to acquire that wealth. So they become evil with that money because they're like, damn, I destroyed my soul to get it. Why should I give to this dude? Well, brother, that, that was your own greediness. Okay, but now you have it. Guess what? Any creature in Christ is a new creature. You can repent and put that money to good use. Maybe the most I might have mercy on you. Come, join the truth, keep the laws in the faith of Christ, and do the work. Instead of staying out there and partying, it's champagne this, uh, whole house that. That's the lifestyle most people are living out there. That money's not going to save you, and that lifestyle is definitely going to kill you. All right? Read on. Verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. You see that, people? The love of money is the root of all evil. Because you love money so much, you're going to be scared to lose your show. Then you're going to apologize to Amalek, to the same people that enslave you. You love money so much, you're going to join their church, go through their school, and learn their ways. The ways of the same people that stole your identity. That's what the love of money will make you do. Read on. Which while some coveted after... They have erred from the faith 
and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's what's happening. You're going to pierce yourself through many sorrows. A lot of people, because of money, they end up in homosexuality, lesbianism. You understand? Pedophilia. Uh, 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 all kinds of nonsense. The big orgy, Caligula type sex things that drown men. You end up in those things. Why? Because you hate your people and you hate yourself and you want to be like the other nations. Give me Psalm 62, verse 10. The book of Psalm, chapter 62, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. Become not vain in robbery. Do not trust in oppression because you trust a people that's oppressing us. You trust the people that's robbing us. And many of, uh, of our people are partakers of those things as well. Read. If riches increase, if set riches not. increase, if you happen to gain much wealth, read, set not your heart upon set it. Set not your heart upon it. Because money can disappear. One sickness can cost you your whole lifetime saving. One phone call from the IRS, you realize, oh damn, I've been paid taxes for 20 years. My accountant has been robbing me. And then you broke. How many stars do you see? Um, in the street begging for bread a lot too many Because when money increased they set their heart on it thinking they would never fall Money can fly away money have wings sometimes read on verse 11 God hath spoken once uh-huh twice have I heard this that power belongeth unto God power belongs to God Not those who have money read verse 12 also unto thee O Lord belongeth mercy mercy belongs to God read for thou renderest to every man according to his work. No, their money will save them. To every man according to God his work. God will render every man according to his work. According to his work. Not your money that's going to save you, but the amount of work that you put in this truth. This truth ain't small no more. This water now is in a place where everybody can drink. So get off your high horses and understand this is the truth and this is the way you should be walking. Give me 1 John 5 and 6. I mean, sorry, um, 1 John 2, verse 15. 1 John chapter 2, start at verse 15. The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You cannot love two things. You cannot love money and love God. God said, do not love the world and the things in it because those things corrupt the man. Okay? So if you say you have the love of God, which is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, you cannot have the love in the world. You cannot be in the club partying all day at the strip joint. You know what I'm saying? Your favorite song cannot be WAP. That's the love of the world. All these things passes away, will pass away. Read on. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So all these things you see happening, all them big Hollywood parties, them big Super Bowl venues, like all these great things you see happening in this world, guess what? They're not of God. Because they all violate God's laws. It's always on a Sabbath day. You know what I'm saying? Friday night. It's always orgies, bacchanal, crazy parties. You understand? Those things are not. The most I say, do not love these things. That doesn't mean you cannot have a nice house, a nice car. Don't get it confused. But don't set your heart on these things. Read on. Verse 17. And the world passeth away. See that? The world will pass away. Whip you. And your money and your cars. Look at California. It's burning. And there's more to come. Read. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So those are the people that's gonna stand forever. Those that abide in the wills of in the will of God. Give me 2 Peter 3 and 10. 2 Peter 3 and 10. Read fast. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt so, up. So when the Most High return, guess what? Nuclear weapon going to destroy this world. Everything in it. Read. 
Verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. All these things, your money, your cars, everything. And California is a precursor to show you what fire can do. And nuclear weapon destroys everything. Read. What manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation? So what kind of man should you be? At the strip joints? Enjoying your money? Pop bottles and pop models? No. You should be in all holy conversation. So repent and put your money to good use. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth. 